Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the capital budgeting technique called payback period. Now, when we're talking about capital budgeting, I have a video for net present value already and for internal rate of return and profitability index. Those all deal with discounted cash flow, so it works with the time value of money. Now, the payback period is a little bit unique because it's simple to calculate. It's easy to understand when you get the number. Uh, but it ignores time value of money, and it only focuses on the payback period. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we have uh, initial cost and divided by the annual net cash flows. This is the formula. If the cash flows are even, we have to make a little adjustment if the cash flows are not even the same every year. So we're going to take 100000 and I'm going to make it, uh, since it's negative already, I need to flip the sign, so I'll make it negative. So it'll be 100000 is our initial cost and the annual cash flow is going to be 24,000. All right, so we're going to divide this out and we're going to get 100,000 divided by 24,000. And so the answer comes out to be something like 4.17 and this is in years. So uh, the number of years that we have to get our money back is four and about one sixth of a year. So a little bit more than four years. Now, what happens is this problem has eight years, so it ignores anything beyond year four plus about a sixth of the year. It ignores most of the year five and all of the year six, seven, and eight. So we might uh, receive plenty of money over the eight years, but it only stops at the four years when you get your money back. All right, so that's how you do even cash flows. What if the cash flows are uneven? Now, if you want to stop the video, you can see here's the steps that I'm doing. Let me just show you. It'll make sense to you. So what we need to do, we need to have the cash flows, the net cash flows for every year and the number of years. So we have an initial investment of $180,000, and then we're going to receive $37,000, $35,000, for years 1 through 10. I've got them all listed out. So we need to calculate what is the cumulative cash flow. So we just start with the one hundred eighty. dollars and the next year, we're going to do the 180 plus a positive 37,000. So we're now down to negative 143, and we keep going all the way down. And so you see at some point, year five, we're going to have a negative number, and year six, we have a positive number. So at the end of year five, we still have negative cash, and in year six, it becomes positive. So the answer is going to be something like five and a half, or five... 0.3 or 5.7. All right, so we're going to find the first negative year, the, I mean the last negative year. And so our formula is going to be, we're going to take five. We just need to enter that because we found that's our last cumulative cash flow that's negative. To that, we're going to add the 15,000. I'm going to take out the sign here by making it negative, uh, divided by the 27,000. So it's going to be about half and we'll divide it out and we end up with, this is going to be not a dollar amount, but a number amount. So it is in terms of years, it's going to be 5.56 years. Now here's our formula down at the bottom. We take the five and we divide the 15 divided by 27. So it works out to be almost five and a half years. That's our payback period but it ignores half of year six, all of year seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it ignores in the payback period. Once we get our money back, we don't we stop counting when we're doing the payback period. So net present value and internal rate of return are the preferred methods, but sometimes people calculate payback period as they're doing their analysis with those other two. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Please like, please comment. Any questions you have, I try to answer on future videos. See you next time.